welcome everyone. My name is Joel Schumacher. Uh, today's uh, recorded webinar will be talking about um, managing your personal finances for success and uh, we'll cover a few different uh, tips, some facts, some tools, um, hopefully some things you can garner that uh, will help you achieve some of your um, financial uh, goals. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and uh, get started. So the first question I want to ask is, why is this included in sort of a uh, farm management series or uh, um, farm borrower series? So why do ag producers care about personal financial management? Well, I think there's a number of reasons why um, the two actually go together um, quite nicely. Um, most ag producers are going to need a loan at some point. Uh, many are going to have um, multiple loans at one time. You know, you may have a real estate loan for 10 or 20 years on some ag property. Um, your lender is certainly going to care about some of the things we're going to talk about related to personal finances. The terms of those loans um, can also be impacted. Um, essentially, if you have poor financial management, um, you may pay a higher interest rate. You may have to have a higher amount down. Um, and because, you know, equipment is expensive and people may have operating loans and real estate loans, um, or simply a, a vehicle loan, um, there's a direct connection between sort of the financial outcomes of the op ag operation and some of those personal financial uh, management skills we're going to talk about. And then also in Montana, we do see a lot of individuals and small family operations in terms of our farm and ranch community, and, and the business and personal finances are often very intertwined. Um, you know, it's generally not an eight to five job where we have farmer ranch assets and then we also have personal assets, oftentimes it's much more of a blended situation. So um, another reason that this is uh, important to your ag operation. And then, um, you know, better financial management um, is often going to help you achieve your financial goals, whether those be personal or on your ag operation side. So um, just generally a good thing for a whole number of reasons there. So that's why we're going to talk a little bit about this, even though it's going to be a little less directly ag related um, than some of the other topics in this series. So first let's talk a little bit about credit reports and scores and then we'll talk about some uh, personal net worth statements. So the first thing I want to talk about because there's a lot of uh, misnomers out there, um, so we're going to try to lay out some different facts. Um, and we're going to talk first about credit reports here. So a credit report, it lists all of your outstanding debt. Um, it lists what the credit limit is. If your credit card says you can borrow up to 20,000 and you're currently borrowing 2,000, both of those items are show up on your credit report. Um, also, it shows whether you've been making payments um, on time, whether they've been late. Um, you know, it's going to list all the different um, debts you might have out there, whether that be a student loan, an auto loan, a mortgage, um, an equipment loan. Um, generally, all these lenders. Um, report to the credit bureaus um, and then that information shows up on your credit report. It also lists your um, current past addresses, your name, your employer if you have one, and a lot of that's simply identifying information because there may be more than one Bob Jones in this world um, and some of that is to delineate you know this Bob Jones versus some other Bob Jones. And then it's also going to show up things like um, bankruptcies, um, any public record information um, judgments against you may show up there as well. So this is a list of the things that are on your credit report. And we, we generally all have a credit report. Um, you can obtain a copy of this for free um, at annualcreditreport.com. Um, there are other websites um, like freecreditreport.com that actually are not free. Um, annualcreditreport.com is one that was um, created. There's three different agencies that create um, credit reports. You may have heard of them, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. And once a year you can get a free report from each of those um, agencies. And if you'd like, you're going to see a lot, well, first of all, you're going to see a lot of similarity between the um, different reporting agencies. They may not be exactly the same, but probably 90 to 95 percent of the information should be on all three reports. But if you want, if once a year isn't enough, um, you can certainly say check one of the um, credit reporting agencies on January 1st, check another one on April 1st, 
and then check another one um, on September 1st or August 1st and that essentially will space them out every four months so if you want to even though it's once a year each because there's three of them that means you could get a free credit report once every four months and you can take a look on that and see if all the information there is correct so if it's showing that yes I have a um, loan from ABC Bank for uh, you know 2015 uh, pickup um, and it should show the balance it might be outdated by you know anywhere from one to maybe three months so if you know you've made a couple new payments I wouldn't worry about the fact that you know it shows the balance a little higher um, than it actually is um, but you may also find an error on your credit report so maybe there's a loan showing up there that isn't yours um, you can call in and request and have that information removed. You'll also see things like late payments show up. Um, you'll also see things like utility bills. So your, your local electric provider may be reporting to the credit agency as well. Now one thing I will say about correcting errors, it is certainly possible and, and pretty easy to um, correct an error. Um, however, you can't correct um, bad information that's accurate. So if you did make a late payment, you know, it got lost in the mail, whatever, um, ends up being 90 days late. Um, they're not going to remove that because that was a fact and it happened. Um, so if it's truly an error, it's pretty easy to get removed. If it's simply bad information you wish wasn't on there, um, it's harder to get that removed. Now, a credit score is different from a credit report. Uh, many people are going to use the terms interchangeably, but they are different. So the credit report is a listing of all that information you have out there, whether you've been making payments on time, how much you owe, whether you know you have the cable bill in your name and the power bill and the gas bill um, and your student loans and mortgages and all those kind of things are going to show up on your credit report. However, most lenders want to turn that information into sort of a good or bad rating so let's say there's five pages of history of you know whether you've made payments on time and, and that's all well and good and certainly many um, um, lenders or loan officers um, will take a look at that information um, but oftentimes what they want really want to know is can I categorize this person as kind of a, a low risk for um, defaulting on a loan if I give them one or a higher risk or somewhere in the middle so what we what credit scores do is they basically take all that list of information and they turn that into a number and then that number makes it a lot easier to sort of compare borrowers across with other borrowers and then it allows you know lenders to kind of categorize folks like anyone with a credit score above this amount we consider to be low risk and moderate risk and higher risk and maybe maybe very high risk and we don't want to lend to that person if you're on that end of the scale um, the FICO score, which is the Fair Isaac Corporation, um, is the most common. But there are lots of different credit scores out there. And different um, companies can actually pay to have a unique credit score created for them based on the information. You know, maybe a credit card company thinks it's not that important whether you uh, pay your cell phone and your utility bill online, but it's, it's very directly important if you um, paid your student loans and your mortgage so they may weight those things a little bit different in the mathematical formula that creates the score they're using so there are many scores um, so the fact that you know you may see that you have a 720 here and some other place you have a um, 810 well they might not be the same score so it might not be that um, one is necessarily higher than the other so just make sure you know that when you're um, comparing scores that you are comparing the same apples to apples type comparison. Um, again, the three main credit reporting companies we talked about earlier, Experian, Equifax, TransUnion. Um, also, you'll see the Fair Isaac Corporation in there as um, companies that are collecting this information. It's what they do for a, a business model. You don't get to know exactly what that mathematical formula is, because essentially that's how they make their money, by collecting this data using their formula and uh, coming out with a number that sort of represents um, your credit history. Now there are some things we know about those scores and we'll talk a little bit about that even though we don't know exactly um, the formula and how it works. So who uses this um, credit score? Well 
I think up to now, all the examples I've given have been some type of lender. So certainly financial institutions, so banks, credit unions, um, uh, maybe a financing company, you know, like if you go in and get uh, John Deere financing or Ford Motor Company financing, um, they certainly um, will, pro will likely check your credit score. Um, an insurance company may also check your credit score as well. Um, and that could be auto, home, life, medical. Um, if you are applying to rent, um, some landlords will access this information. Um, some medical companies might as well. Utility companies that you are going to establish business with. So if you want to sign up, say here in Montana with Northwest Energy, it's possible that they will um, check your credit worthiness um, before they, they make that connection. And some employers that you're applying to um, may check that as well. So the, it's all um, legal for these folks to do that um, as long as you have a business relationship um, with them. Doesn't mean that they have to check it, um, but it means that it's possible that they will. So I mentioned just a little bit earlier, we don't know the exact formula on what goes into a FICO credit score or any other credit score, um, but we do know some general categories in terms of how they weight this. Um, so the number one thing that um, is in your credit score is your payment history. So have you been making on-time payments um, to all the different accounts that you have out there, whether that be your power bill or your mortgage payment or your operating loan? You know, were those payments made, were they received and made on time? Okay, so that's 35% of your score is that. So if you have a payment that is late, um, that's going to lower your score. But what we don't know is how much is, let's say you had one late payment in the last year, how much will that lower your score? What if that late payment was three years ago? We do know that if you had one late payment last year, that will be uh, more detrimental to your score than if your one late payment was three years ago. So as you move past these sort of bad things in your credit history, um, your score will increase. The next most important thing is the amounts owed. So lenders are going to take a look at, you know, does this person owe $5,000 total? Do they owe a million dollars total? Do, you know, do you have, um, if they have a credit card, is um, that allows them to borrow twenty thousand? Are they are they borrowing nineteen thousand nine hundred dollars, or are they borrowing two thousand um, dollars? Borrowing two thousand dollars indicates the borrower is managing their credit, i.e., they have more available to them than they're actually utilizing. You know, if you're using every dollar that the lender will possibly give you, um, you're not going to get as many points as if you were using less than that uh, maximum. The length of your credit history. Um, so when we see younger folks who are, say, 19 years old, how many years of history do you think they have of making on-time payments? Well, um, generally we don't look at information before age 18, so um, you know, kind of one year is the maximum they could have. However, if a 50-year-old goes in there, you know, they may have 10, 20, 30 years of making on-time payment and showing that they're able to manage and, and keep up with payments that they agreed to make. So some of it, 15% uh, of your score is based on that length of how long you've had to sort of show that you've been a good um, borrower. Um, new credit is the next one for 10%. So if you walk into a dealership and you want to buy a new baler um, and they look and they see that, well, last week you opened a, a new loan for tractor and the week before you got a new loan for a pickup and the week before um, you applied for a new credit card um, you're probably going to lose some points there because um, it's kind of a red flag why is this person all of a sudden making multiple new loan requests not that you should never go out and uh, get a new loan um, but be aware that if you if you go out multiple times in a short period um, that could affect your um, credit score in a negative way and then the last piece is what we call types of credit used. Um, so some of the best types of credit that will sort of earn you the most points are things like mortgages, um, um, traditional bank loans for, for real estate would probably be um, some of the best. Um, auto loans, um, maybe not quite as good, but still pretty good about building history. Um, credit cards would be not as good as mortgages or car loans in terms of, of um, building up your credit score. And then financing companies um, 
And I don't want you to necessarily think of like Ford Finance or General Motors Finance or John Deere Finance. Um, but what I want to think about here is things like the furniture store that offers 12 months no interest. You're probably not getting financed by the actual furniture store or jewelry store that's offering that promotion. There's probably a financing company sort of behind the scenes that's providing that. And that type of credit will get you less points than if you were getting a traditional bank or um, credit union. And then if you have things Things like um, payday loans showing up and those kind of things that would be lower yet in terms of um, building points so um, there's kind of a scale in terms of what type of loans you're you're having um, and that's just 10 percent of your score so those are the components that go into your score but again um, those companies make their money by knowing exactly how each of these are calculated so they don't just give that away for free um, but we do get to know these general categories so if you know you've had a um, particular area you think might be weak, um, this is a good opportunity um, for you to focus on, you know, building that up. And I'm going to kind of share a little aside of a, a story that um, from Montana here um, about how the FICO score doesn't capture everything. Um, your lenders are also going to look at other things. If you've ever filled out a form, there's other information on it. Um, some of you may have also heard the term relationship lending, so they want to get to know you, uh, especially in our smaller towns. They may know where you work. They may know if you, where you hang out in the evenings. They may know your your parents, your family members. You know, they may know if you're involved in community events, and you know, if there were missed payments, maybe they knew that well. There's been a death in the family, and some things were happening. Those are the kind of things that aren't going to show up as well on your credit score. Um, but let me also give you an example here of a. Um, there was a local ag producer in Montana who um, had purchased some land um, 30, 40 years ago and had a loan for it, but paid it off at least 20 plus years ago um, and hadn't had credit in his name. So um, the rest of the farm finances were handled by his spouse, his wife. Um, most of the utility bills and things were also either in the spouse's name or in the name of the ranch corporation. Um, so he had essentially um, very little payment history because almost nothing was in his name. He really had um, very little credit history to show. There just weren't any things on there because he hadn't been borrowing, which means that he, he was kind of invisible in terms of the credit score. And having no loans and nothing in your name means that you're not proving you're making payments on time. So to get a really good or the very best scores, you actually have to have some loans, um, make payments on them. So he was kind of slipping under the radar, and he decided that um, although he had plenty of cash in the bank and certainly had a net worth of you know, several hundred thousand dollars and no outstanding debt, that there was a 0% financing um, offer um, at a local equipment dealership. And he decided, you know, 0%, he could leave some of his money invested, take advantage of the 0% deal. So he applied, um, and he um, actually was turned down for um, that loan. And he was turned down because he, he didn't really have any types of credit used. He didn't have much length of credit history. He didn't have a payment history. His amounts owed were all zero because he didn't have any. So essentially, his credit score was quite low. The decision on some of those is often not made locally at that dealership, but by a, probably heavily by a computer-generated um, algorithm, you know, somewhere off-site, probably at the headquarters for this company or a financing company they use to um, provide that service. Um, so let me also kind of follow up with part two of this story is um, this individual, he had a younger family member who was just out of college and, you know, his only paycheck was was coming actually from um, his grandfather, the one we just talked about. Had very little net worth, um, but he'd had a student loan that he was making payments on. He'd had a uh, a loan on a on a used uh, pickup that he'd been making payments on on time, and he also decided to um, purchase a similar piece of equipment. Um, so he went in and applied. Now his net worth is you know probably ten thousand dollars, and he owes. Um, some money still on some of his loans, but he applied and he actually got approved because he had a payment history. He had um, 
some amounts owed out there, some types of credit, things that built up his credit score. So he kind of had a history and he wasn't invisible to this score. Um, so the point I want to make with this is, you know, these are some a FICO scores. It's definitely good to have a higher score, but there's also times when this isn't the only thing that matters in terms of a lending decision. Um, so if you know you've got a challenging FICO store and there's some score and there's some legitimate reasons why, you know, like this individual that had essentially, um, you know, paid off his place, hadn't needed any um, lending services for quite some time. You know, if he was able to walk into across the street and talk to a, a, a lender that he knew personally, he could probably explain those things and they would probably happily have loaned him the money um, to make that purchase. Um, so this is one part of the lending decision. It's certainly a big part, especially for some of those 0% uh, financing deals where that lending decision is made oftentimes in an off-site um, type location where the relationship isn't built up locally. So let's go over just a couple more um, kind of facts in terms of how Americans um, fare. So a FICO score is not a 0 to 1,000 range. Um, they came up with this wonderful scale of 300 to 850. Um, not exactly sure why we have that particular range, um, but essentially what we're seeing here is, you know, about um, maybe 15 percent have under a 550 um, credit score, you know, and about 40 percent have over 750. Anything over 750 um, is generally pretty good, 650 to 750. Um, not too bad or usually acceptable. You know, 550 to 650, we're starting to raise a few red flags and certainly anything under um, 550 is kind of two red flags, you know, waving in the air that this, this borrower might be higher risk. So if you've um, obtained your credit score, um, you can kind of compare it to a chart like this and say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm doing pretty good or um, about average or boy, I'm on the low end of this and, and I, I may need to work on getting my credit score up. Now this is essentially kind of the same information by age group. Um, so the, the point I want to make here is as we age our credit scores tend to improve. We're building assets, we're making payments on time, um, we're probably building our net worth, um, we probably you know have maybe paid some, we've got longer history of making on-time loan payments. So you can kind of see that um, you know our younger folks you know, a lot of them start out on the lower end and then as they move through their careers and make on-time payments and um, probably just become more responsible as they age, um, we tend to see those credit scores move higher. So comparing yourself to the national average um, is certainly helpful, but you can also compare yourself to your peer group here if you want to say, oh, well, the reason I don't have a 800 credit score is I'm 25 years old and only 2% of people that age um, are in that that high of a category. Okay, so we talked a little bit about um, things that go into your credit score. Well, let's talk a little bit about how much. You know, again, we don't get to know exactly, but missing um, or neglecting a payment um, can drop your score by as much as 100 points, um, essentially immediately. Um, but then as time goes on, you'll, you'll kind of earn back those points by making on-time payments. A bankruptcy can stay on your report for seven to ten years. It can do a one-time drop. This is probably the worst thing that can happen um, of 250 points initially. But again, um, if your bankruptcy was one year ago, that's going to be um, a whole lot bigger impact than if it was eight years ago. You'll continue to earn those points back, you know, by making uh, on-time payments and managing, you know, your credit appropriately. You know, I mentioned a little bit about where you're getting your um, loans from. So I talked about finance companies, say the furniture store or jewelry store. You know, getting a loan from a place like that, you know, might reduce your um, credit score by 20 points. So not a big drop. Um, but, you know, had you got a mortgage instead of that financing company loan, um, you wouldn't have seen that 20 point drop. So just a couple of kind of things to put in perspective, the things that can make your score go up or down. So what helps it? Certainly on-time payments is the number one thing. 
uh, making more than the minimum payment or paying off your credit cards. Keep your loan balance low, and that's um, not just how much you're total borrowing, but if your credit card allows you to borrow $10,000, if every month you're borrowing $9,950, uh, that's going to be kind of a little bit of a red flag compared to if you were borrowing one or $2,000 uh, on, on a monthly basis because you're, you're only using 10 or 20% of your credit versus essentially all. Credit history matters, so sometimes you 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 want to keep an older account open, at least one or two. So if you do have 10 years of great payment history on a credit card, but you're not using it as much because you opened another one, you may want to leave that older account open um, to make sure that that stays on your credit history for a while until you've built some history in some other um, accounts as well. Doesn't mean you have to keep every account open forever, um, but you may want to keep one or two open that have some length. Of time to them and then you know don't open unnecessary accounts so if you've got nine credit cards and you only use two do you really need all nine open um, I wouldn't necessarily run out and close them all if you're going to be making a uh, loan application so if you know you're going to be let's say purchasing a new tractor or some farmland I wouldn't necessarily run in today and close seven accounts and then walk in a month from now and say I'd like a loan, then you may have to explain um, why you closed all those accounts. So I might do it gradually um, to get some of those um, closed. Now, if you're not going to be applying for a new loan in the next six or eight months, you know, it might be a great time to go get those just all taken care of and close some of those older accounts. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the kind of the financial component of this. Um, so it's great to have this, and you want to be a good borrower. Um, but there's a, there's a direct financial impact to you. Um, I contacted a, a, a local banker that I know, and I said, you know, if I walked in with a different credit score, what, what kind of rate might I get? And, and he showed me here with just a 15-year real estate loan for $150,000 that um, essentially... Um, if I had a credit score of 800, he could offer me a rate of 3.7%. If I had a 750 credit score, he'd offer me 3.9%. Um, and if it was 650, the bank would offer 4.7% in terms of what the interest rate would be. So over the course of that 15 years, um, the total interest varies there between 45,000 to 48,000 up to 67,000. Um, so direct out-of-pocket cost for me having a lower credit score uh, when I walked into a particular you know, bank. And these quotes were about a week ago here. So these were done in August um, of 2018. Um, same thing on a um, auto loan. This is a different lender. But again, you can see the rate is lower for those with the higher score. But the, the other thing I wanted to point out here for... Um, Someone with a credit score of 650, they actually had to make a 30% down payment instead of 20, where the bank wouldn't lend to them. So it might not just be the interest rate, it might be they won't lend you as much money you know, towards whatever you're working on. So the terms of your loan can certainly vary depending on um, the score. Okay, so that's enough about uh, credit scores um, and credit reports. The last thing I'll say about those is just I would encourage you to uh, check your credit report for errors from time to time. And um, to get your score, you typically have to actually buy it. It does not come with the report. You can buy it for $10 or $15. Um, but many banks um, or credit card companies at least have started actually including it for free on your monthly statement. So if you have one of those, you may want to um, check and see if it's being provided to you free. Um, and then you can kind of monitor that over time. And if it goes, you know, up or down significantly and you don't know why, um, you may want to check that credit report and see um, if something has negatively impacted um, score. So now let's talk about kind of the final piece here. Um, I want to mention is just your personal net worth statement or a personal financial statement. And... What this is, is going to be a list of all of your assets and all your liabilities. So all the things you own and all the things you owe people. Um, there's kind of two ways to do it. You can do one for just yourself or your family, your personal stuff. You can also do one for your farm and ranch. Um, many of you may co-mingle these. It's fine if you want to do them together. 
Um, I would say just match it up with whatever kind of accounting you do for other things. If, if all of your assets are, are um, you know, combined together, just do this as a combined together as well. Um, if you're separate, then do them separate. And if you wanted to, you could combine them, but kind of have a, you know, section A for the farm and ranch type assets and section B for the other ones, but kind of total it on the same page. A couple things to note about a net worth statement. This isn't really about income or liquidity, so this isn't about the balance in your checking account. Um, it's not about how much money you make, um, but it's kind of a measuring stick of, you know, what are we worth today? Are we making progress over time? Um, so let me show you a quick example, and we'll talk a little bit more about this. So this is kind of the assets section of a little worksheet I have, and I'm happy to email this to anyone, or you can create your own. Um, I recommend doing it in an Excel or some other type of spreadsheet program so that you can update it next year very quickly. Certainly it can be done with pencil and paper, and there's nothing um, wrong with that. Um, I just tend to prefer this, and it adds for me and everything. So again, if you send me an email, I'll give you that information at the end. I'd be happy to provide this sheet to you. So I just go ahead and I list assets that are there. Um, this particular one I've got set up um, more on the personal side. So, you know, do you have cash, checking account, savings account? Are there other assets? Maybe you've got an investment account or CDs or, or, or kind of the, the financial accounts piece. Um, and then you could have retirement accounts set separately. And then on the other assets, and this might be where, especially with farm and ranch income, um, you may have a lot more things here. Do you own land? Do you own your car, your pickup, uh, tractor, equipment, livestock? Um, do you have grain sitting in the bin? Um, I didn't necessarily note it on this, but I have 2018 balance. You may want to know what day that is. So if you're doing January 1st every year, maybe you do it with your taxes in April every year. That's fine. Um, you may just want to note so that you know when you did it, so the next time you do it, you can say, oh, well, in the last six months, I've made this much progress. In the last 18 months, I've made this much. So I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, getting an appraisal for your land or your home. You know, put in your best guess on some of these things. We're not getting ready to sell these things, but we are trying to track these things over time. And you'll see that a lot of things like, um, you know, equipment, automobiles specifically are going to decline in value from year to year. So that pickup will wear out, um, you know, over time. Um, but then other things like your land, um, your home, they may actually increase over time. So you can kind of see some of those things um, there as well. Now, so it's great to list the things that we, uh, that we own. We also need to list the things that we owe to people. So whether that's a car loan or student loans, mortgage, real estate loan, maybe you got an operating loan, um, credit cards, maybe you've got a balance at the um, fuel distributor in your area or the fertilizer supplier. Um, all those things can be listed here. If you want to get a little bit fancier, I would say put a space between some of these and write down what the terms are. Uh, maybe how many payments are remaining. So if that pickup loan is, you know, it was 20000 and we've paid it down to 12000 and there's a remaining 36 payments at, you know, 4% interest or whatever it might be, um, that's a great addition if you want to put those notes in as to um, when that is or at least when the payoff is or what the interest rate is um, on there as well. And then it'll total to how much you, you owe in total. You can subtract the total from the previous page, the total on this, and that's your net worth at the end of the day. From year to year, hopefully our net um, worth is increasing. Um, if you've gone, you know, it's not like um, farm income is guaranteed, and we're certainly going to be years that are good or better than others. Um, so it's possible that you're going to have a decline from one year to another. It's also possible you're going to have an increase or a big increase or a small. Um, but if you're, if you know, if you're going on two, three, four, five years where your um, net worth is declining, maybe you need to take a look at your business plan and make sure that this is going to get you on track um, to get to where you want to be long term. You know, it's one thing to lose, uh, you know, ten thousand dollars one year because the the prices were low, 
Um, it, it's another thing to lose $10,000 every year and watch your net worth sort of dry up. And then as you, you know, reach a, a point in your life where you want to retire and you've drained all your assets by slowly losing it um, through the operation. So you want to make sure in general you're making positive progress, you know, every five years. Or you may need to revisit, you know, how your, how your operation is structured. So a couple of reasons I think it's a great idea to do this um, for yourself. One, this is a great report card on your financial progress. You know, with agriculture, there's a lot of uncertainties. You can have weather, prices, you know, you can have hail, you can have yield premiums, lots of different things um, can cause your income to go up or down. Um, so we kind of need to take a little bit longer term view, um, but make sure that, you know, if you're going to spend your career doing this, hopefully you're, you're getting yourself paid um, for what you're doing and you're building some assets. So it's an excellent way to measure how you're doing um, away from this year's yield or last year's yield kind of thing. And then this also can be an area you might um, identify some areas of success or improvement. Maybe you tried some things and you had um, some success, um, but maybe also it says, you know, hey, what I've been doing hasn't been working the last three or four years. You know, maybe I need to kind of sit down with my business plan and think about what can I do um, to make some improvements in my operation as well. And then the last thing I'm going to mention here, <clears throat> most of your lenders are going to ask for this type of data. So if you're going to go in and apply for a loan, having this information already together will uh, simplify your life. Um, also probably earn you a few brownie points with your lender um, by having that stuff all ready when you walk in the door. So just kind of a sidelight there is, you know, your relationship with your banker. One, he's going to want to know these kind of things. He or she's going to want to know this. And then two, um, they're probably going to be impressed that you're already tracking these things that they probably feel are, are pretty important. Um, the final thing that I'm going to say with this is I would say um, don't make this a 10-hour project. Um, you know, make this something you can do in uh, certainly less than maybe the first year, no more than three hours after that should be less than two, could even be half hour. Um, because if it becomes a 10 hour project, you're unlikely to do it. So I would say keep it quick, keep it simple, get some benefit out of it. <clears throat> but if you uh, spend too much time on it, um, probably it won't get done and then you won't be able to get any value from sort of the exercise of tracking this over time. All right, so um, just kind of a couple final points here. Um, first of all, if you have questions or if you want that spreadsheet, um, please send me an email, jschumacher at montana.edu. Um, or if you want to visit about some of these things, I'd be happy to um, discuss them a little further um, at 994-6637. Um, hopefully there's a couple tips here um, that maybe will help you um, be able to make sure you get the best terms um, that you can um, whenever you do walk in and get a loan for your ag operation and then two hopefully this helps keep you on track to make sure you know you have a long-term successful business plan so with that I'm happy to answer any more questions people have via either email or phone and uh, hope you've gained a little something today that will help uh, improve your ag operation